So when you run your code, it will wait for each line to be executed or each block of code to execute before the next one can happen. Now, if you put something in there that requires a bit of waiting time, like you're waiting on a server or a response from something external, your program's just gonna be sat there doing nothing. Now, there's a couple of ways around this. We can use uh, threading and we can use async. I'm gonna try and show you a few examples using a request to a server so I can show you how it would all goes a bit quicker. So on the screen, I have a synchronous version this basically just goes out to this url sends a number uh, uh, one to 200 one to two two and a half thousand and then gives us a response back now as you can see uh, when i ran this it took 5.4 seconds so this is what i'm um, actually using as my demo it is a server on the local host on my machine here on my network um, so we're actually not getting an awful lot of uh, delay in the actual response but that's just going to further compound so you can really see the difference in time taken and then you could extrapolate that out when you actually have to wait for a response back um, we ignore this one we're just hitting this endpoint which is just returning an id a number so when i run this code here it's going to go through each line line by line when it gets the response back you can see it's printing it out to the screen here and it took 5.85 seconds slightly slower than the time i ran it just a minute ago so this is all well and good, but what happens if we have thousands and thousands of URLs that we need to check on? This is going to take forever. So this, the, the first option is to use uh, threading. So I'm gonna be using here in this example, we're using the uh, concurrent futures. Uh, we're using the thread pool executor, which is basically going to allow us to use extra threads um, and it's gonna to speed it up ever so slightly. So generally speaking, threads and multi-threading like this is better for if you're trying to work in parallel. So if your code is constantly doing something, you're not waiting for anything external, then this is probably going to be the best way for you. But if you're dealing with any network requests, then you, Bob, you are going to want to use async. And I'll show you that in just a second. So let me just run this one quick. You can see it looks slightly different, maybe a bit quicker. And this is going to come through 3.84 seconds, so slightly faster than that one there. This is fairly easy to use and fairly simple to set up. All you need is a function that does your thing for you and a list in this case, because I'm using the map. There are different ways that you can use this, but this is how you would use it if you were making network requests. So the third option is async. Now this is slightly more complicated because there is more to it. We need to have an extra function here so we can see that this is our main function that actually makes the request. Then we have one here that creates all the tasks. We are using async IO here and it will await for the response for us. So this is basically like sending out all of your requests in one go, sort of, and it will manage and wait for each of the responses to come back. So it will basically uh, remove any of that time spent waiting in your code. So I'm gonna run this and we'll see that it will take literally about a second, 1.37 seconds, so it took 1.34 last time. And we got all of the data back within a list. So when would you want to use any of these versions? Well, if you're trying to request data from the same server over and over again, you're gonna find that you're gonna get rate limited. So you aren't generally gonna be able to use this async version, but you can work it through because if, for example, the rate limit on your server that you're trying to get to is 300 calls per minute, and you only need to make 200 calls, you can asynchronously send 200 and get all the responses back in a flash. Whereas in, if you were doing it synchronously, you'd have to send 200 actual, two or 300 single requests, which could take a couple of minutes. The other alternative is if you have lots of URLs that you need to visit for lots of different sites, lots of different servers, you can then use your async code to request them all in one go and get the responses back and then handle it that way. So there'll be a link to my GitHub down below with these examples in. And if you're interested in how you might use these in a different kind of way, I think you're going to enjoy this video right here.